Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome to video number two, uh, lesson 1.2 for your big ideas page 12, where we are going to continue working with equations and work back, we're going to continue to solve equations, and we are going to apply what we learned this time to solve multi-step equations using inverse operations and properties of equality. So we get to apply what we learned in our first lesson this year. Inverse operations, what does that mean? That means we're going to isolate the variable. That's right. We use inverse operations to isolate the variable. And properties of equality, what does that help us do? That's right. It keep, helps us keep the equation balanced. All right? Our essential question, how can you solve multi-step equation? All right? How can you solve one? So, ladies and gentlemen, as I move to this slide, I guess I'm going to give you another uh, hint, another racism, which says it's going to be very helpful for you if you just put your pens, your pencils, your markers, whatever you're taking notes with, put those down. Put them down, listen, watch, learn, and then at the end of the slide, I'll say, pause the video, at which time you will pause it, you'll pick up your stuff, you'll write everything down, repeating it in your mind. If you go through the insanity of trying to listen to me while trying to write it all down, while trying to understand it all, that's three things. And we just are not good human beings when it comes to multitasking. So please heed my hint. Make life easier. Make math easier. Yes, will it take a few more minutes to complete your notes? You're right, it will. Aww. However, the return in your investment of time will make your math so much easier that as you begin to understand it the way I talk about it, you are going to be able to go faster over time because you're going to practice. We practice doing our math and we practice going faster. So put those things down and listen to how we get the rest of this done. So, ladies and gentlemen, your book does an absolute pathetic job of explaining how to solve multi-step equations. All it says is use inverse operations. Well, that's pathetic. So first, what is a multi-step equation? A multi-step equation is an equation with two or more uh, two or more operations. Okay, so our first lesson, we only had one operation. Now we have two or more, we call that multi-step. Two, to solve multi-step equations, think about it this way. Predominantly think about it as simplifying the equation. Ladies and gentlemen, I know there's other ways and I know most teachers teach it differently than I do. I'm just here to tell you, Simplifying. Well, what's the base word of simplify? Simple. Let's make everything simple. Like our first lesson, a simple equation. So if you help, if you learn how to simplify, you are going to find things are easy. Well, simplifying means two things. Two things. It means one, we're going to combine like terms, and two, we are going to eliminate the parentheses. What does it mean to combine? We add things together when we combine things together. That's, excuse me, that's right, we're going to combine. And then eliminating, that means get rid of. And I know you know how to eliminate parentheses. I know you know how to do it already. I just am very confident that you do. So let's talk about combining like terms. One, two ways to combine like terms. One, like terms are on the same side of the equal sign. If they are on the same side of the equal sign, then you just follow the given operation. Add them or subtract them or multiply them or divide them or whatever you need to do to combine them. Whatever it says to do. They're on the same side of the equal sign. If they're on the opposite sides of the equal sign, well, we learned opposite a lot of times tells us to use inverse operations. Opposite is inverse. So when they're on opposite sides of the equal sign, we're going to use the inverse operation to simplify, all right, to combine them. And then there's two ways to eliminate the parentheses. The first one you're probably not very familiar with. It's called divide out the factor. And we will learn about it as we go. Trust me, it's not a huge deal. You will learn it, I guarantee it. Number two, you know how to do number two. Distribute. You're distributing the factor across the parentheses and I know you've distributed before. Lastly, you've got to make sure that you understand in everything we're doing, every operation where we are simplifying this equation, we are keeping in mind the ultimate goals of isolating the variable and keeping the equation balanced to make things simpler, all right? So go ahead and pause the video, get that copied, and join me in example number one. Hey, welcome to example number one, where we're going to solve two-step equations. We're going to solve 3x minus 12 is equal to negative 3, and so we are going to simplify. And again, what does simplify mean? Combine like terms and eliminate parentheses. Well, I don't see any parentheses, so we're just going to combine like terms. You should know what terms are by now. 
we have a negative 12 and a negative 3 that are like terms. We don't have any other x terms, we only have one. So we're going to combine that negative 12 and the negative 3. We recognize they are on opposite sides of the equal sign. I do have another teacher who, who talks about the opposite side of the equal sign, not in the same way as I do, but one of the things she shows her students is to draw a line. She thinks that helps them, and if it helps them, that's great. So if, if maybe that's something that helps you by looking across the line to see, hey, I'm on opposite sides of the line, that's the opposite sides of the equal sign, that's great. Well, when we just discussed it. If they're on opposite sides and we want to combine them, we use the opposite operation. So I want to move this 12 over to the other side. I could move to 3 to the x side, but that wouldn't help me isolate. I want to isolate that variable, move everything to the other side. So I'm going to move the 12 over. And the opposite of subtracting 12 is adding 12. So now I have 3x is equal to 9. I have my simple equation now, one step, dividing by 3, because that's the opposite, the inverse of multiplying by 3, keeping the equation balanced by doing it to both sides, and I find that x equals 3. Pause the video, write it all down, join me for example 2. Hey, welcome to example number 2, where we're going to solve a divided by 6 plus 2 is equal to 5. Once again, we're thinking of simplifying. I don't see any parentheses, and most of the time you won't, but there will be times you do. But I do see a positive 2 and a positive 5. I see they're on opposite sides of the equal sign. I want to move that 2 away from my variable. So my inverse operation when they're on opposite sides is to subtract 2. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides because I'm combining the 5 and, the, and now the negative 2. And so now it leaves me with a divided by 6 is equal to 3. And now again, I have a simple equation where the inverse of dividing by 6 is to multiply by 6. And the 6's simplify out, leaving me a. And 6 times 3 is 18. a equals 18. Go ahead and pause the video, write all that down, and join me for example 3. Welcome to example 3, where we're taking a negative 2 thirds x, we're subtracting 7, and it's equal to 9. So just like we've done before, we've got this negative 2 thirds x, this negative 7 and the 9. We see that we have two common like terms negative 7 and 9. They're on opposite sides of the equal sign, so we want to combine them. We want to move the negative 7 away from the variable x because we want to isolate it. That's why we're keeping that ultimate goal in mind. So we have two, negative 2 thirds x, the opposite of the negative 7. If I want to move it to the opposite sign, inverse operations to combine is to add 7. And so 9 plus 7 is 16. So now I have negative 2 thirds x is equal to 16. Then what we need to do is divide by a negative 2 thirds because a negative 2 thirds is the opposite of multiplying. When I divide it out, that helps me isolate the variable and that leaves me with x. And I have to come over to the other side and divide by a negative 2 thirds. Now remembering back to seventh grade and fifth grade, when I divide, I change it to multiplication by the reciprocal. So we're going to go over here, we're going to take 16 over 1, and we're going to change that to multiplication. Here's my 16. We're taking our division and making it multiplication. We're taking our negative 2 thirds and making it a negative 3 halves. And so now we can actually do the math. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 16 8 times. 8 times a negative 3 is a negative 24. So x is equal to negative 24. I'm going to show you another way to do this equation. Please ask about that in class. I don't want to take up our video time. Oh, I almost forgot. Please pause the video, get it all written down, and join me for example number four. So now we're going to combine like terms to solve an equation, but this time in combining like terms, it's looking a little different because we're combining like terms that I can tell real quickly are on what? Yeah, now they're on the same side and possibly the opposite side. Ooh, we've got a whole bunch of like terms to, to combine. I recognize I have a 3R here and a 2R there. Okay, if I combine those, they're on the same side as the equal sign. Same side. So I follow the same operations. This is a positive and a positive, so I'm adding two positives. 3 plus 2 is what? 5 R's. And then I have the negative 17 and the 13. They are on opposite sides. So when I combine them, I'm going to go to opposite sides. So I do the opposite operation. I'm adding 17 this time. And I know that 13 plus 17 is 30. So I've simplified that entire equation by combining two sets of like terms, and that creates what? 
a simple equation. That's what simplifying does. So now I'm down to one step. To isolate r, the inverse is to divide by 5. It's the opposite of multiplying by 5. To keep the equation balanced, I divide both sides by 5. r is equal to 6. Simple. Go ahead and pause the video. Write it all down. Join me for example 5. Welcome to example 5, where negative 24 is equal to 6 plus 9 plus 13a. And so I recognize a bunch of like terms. Wow. I recognize a negative 24, a 6, and a 9. Well, the 6 and the 9 are on the same side. So I can combine 6 and 9, and that is 15. So negative 24 is actually equal to 15 plus 13a. Now I have like terms that are on opposite sides. So if I want to combine, I want to move that 15 to the other side to get it away from the, the a. And so I'm, the opposite of a positive 15 is a negative 15. So I'm going to add the negative 15, and I'm going to get negative 39 is now equal to 13a. Bingo. I've made my equation simple. I can now use one step by isolating the variable, keeping it balanced. The inverse is to divide by 13. That's the opposite of multiplying. I divide by 13 on both sides because that's what property of equality says to do to keep the equation balanced. And so I have a is equal to negative 3. Go ahead and pause the video and then join me for our last example of this one. Example 6. Solving negative 27 plus 2c minus 15 plus 8 minus 6c. Wow, they're just giving us a bunch of stuff to combine. That's all they're doing. And so I have the 2c and the negative 6c. They're on the same side, so I can go boom. 2 plus a negative 6 is negative 4c. I have the negative 15 and the positive 8. They're on the same side, so when I add a negative 15 and a positive 8, I get negative 7. And that's equal to negative 27. Now I recognize one last set of like terms on opposite sides of the equal sign, the negative 27 and the negative 7. Of course, I want to move this negative 7 away from the C so I can isolate. So the opposite of that is to add when I'm combining. So negative 27 plus 7 is 20. Negative 20, my fault, is equal to a negative 4C. And we've made the equation simple. And our last step. To isolate the variable is to do the inverse operation, divide by negative 4, keep the equation balanced by doing it to both sides, and we find that c is equal to 5. Ladies and gentlemen, pause the video, write that down, and then come back and view the quick write. And here is the quick write. Write both of these equations down, and then get them done. Take a quick break. I know this video is a little bit long, so I'm going to say goodbye. I'll see you in a few minutes.